Happy Easter. I'm Pastor Dawson here, and I just want to say Jesus Christ is risen, and he's risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, some of you may recall that uh, the sermon I preached uh, a couple of uh, Sundays ago, I mentioned that I got a text uh, from my brother, my brother Mike, that his lovely wife, uh, Audrey, uh, had passed away uh, due to cancer. She had been in hospice for approximately five months. And we had planned a uh, funeral service for her in Sacramento, California, but unfortunately that uh, funeral service uh, got canceled because of the uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic. Well, this past week, I got another text from my brother Mike informing me that uh, my Aunt Babette had passed away at the age of 98 due to the coronavirus. Now, Aunt Babette lived in a small town called Bierve, which is a few miles south of Paris, France. In fact, I, I lived in Bierve for a few years as a small boy uh, before we came here to the United States. And Aunt Babette was uh, the oldest of four siblings. There was Aunt Babette, and then there was uh, Jacques and Francois, and then, of course, my uh, my mother was the youngest, uh, Colette was the youngest of the four. Uh, unfortunately, Jacques and Francois uh, got killed uh, fighting against the Germans as part of the Belgian underground uh, during World War II. And my mother, God bless her soul, uh, passed away approximately 10 years ago. And the other day on Ancestry.com, I found out that uh, my real father, Philip, uh, Philip Carey uh, had passed away in England uh, quite a few years ago as well. So as the old saying goes, um, once your both your parents are deceased, uh, then you're next on the assembly line of life, as they say, because death is part of the reality of living in this world. And believe me, right now, uh, we are living in unprecedented times when the fear of death catching a, a disease and possibly dying has literally shut down our lives and shut down this country and pretty much shut down this world in many ways. I mean, here we are doing things that we thought we would never do because of our fear of, of death. I um, mean, they say, uh, you know, the authorities, if you want to stay alive and save a life, then you've got to do all these things. You've got to uh, wear a mask. You've got to wear gloves. You've got to uh, sanitize and sanitize and wash your hands and stay about six feet away from everybody. And you can't come together uh, with your neighbors and your family and your friends. Uh, you've got to stay home alone because of our fear of death. And of course, the fear of death has been with us as human beings 
since the beginning of time. It's uh, instinctive to be afraid of our own death or death itself. If you want to see uh, the brutality and the fear of death, all you have to do is watch a movie like Gladiator, which is one of my favorite movies uh, starring Russell Crowe, where he plays the role of this uh, Roman general called Maximus. And at the very beginning of the movie, Russell Crowe as Maximus is uh, speaking to his troops before they go into battle against the Germanic hordes from the north. And he says to them, fight hard, fight strong, be brave, be bold, strike hard. But if you find yourself floating through fields of green all alone with the sun in your face, then you are probably in Elysium and already dead. Well, the Romans uh, had a, a fear, uh, a little bit of a thought that there might have be something after, uh, uh, after death called Elysium, but they couldn't prove it. And of course, Jesus lived during uh, the harsh reality of Roman times. And I'm sure as, uh, as we all are, he was 100% human. I'm sure instinctively he too had a fear of death, his own death, as we all do. But what made Jesus unique is that he also talked about the fact that after three days, he would rise from the grave. And he told his disciples this several times, especially in the Gospel of John. And on the third day, I will raise myself again. But of course, the disciples didn't really put it all together until Easter morning, which is what we celebrate today, when they found the tomb empty, his body gone. And they suddenly realized that his words about being resurrected were true. And the very course of human history was changed. The power of the resurrection became a living, breathing reality. And of course, I can only think about another one of my favorite movies, the movie Risen, starting Joseph Fiennes, who plays the role of this Roman tribune sent by Pontius Pilate to find the body of Yeshua, the, the body of Jesus, the so-called Messiah. And he seeks this body, this Messiah. And then one evening, he's told that uh, Yeshua, this, this Messiah, is, is in an upper room in a small town with his disciples. And he goes there alone with his sword to slaughter and bring back this mess. Messiah, and then he opens the door and he sees the living, breathing, resurrected Christ, the same face that he saw on the cross, alive and smiling and breathing and inviting him in, and he drops his sword and never picks it up again because of the power of the resurrection. It reminds me of, um, of one of my seminary professors, Gerhard Krodel. Now, Gerhard Krodel had this very thick German accent, and he would uh, speak like this, and he would say, uh, before the resurrection B.C., all there was was uh, this world of, of the living and nothing after. But we now live in the A.D. times, in the year of our Lord, of our resurrected Jesus Christ, and we now suddenly realize that we are living in this world, in the land of the dying. And for those of us who believe, we are going to the land of the living, the land of eternal life. And we would all sit there saying, yes, Dr. Crodo, thank you very much. But it's true. I mean, I've done a lot of graveside services, <laughs> believe me. And there is nothing more powerful than to stand there and say that birth and death are two realities that every human being faces. That they're born into this world and one day they will die out of this world. And 
also to stand there and say that we will see the deceased again. Our faith tells us because of the resurrected Christ that we will see the deceased again. Those are powerful words that help people deal with the death of a loved one. And then a lot of times, if the weather was decent, I would stand around and, uh, and talk to some of the relatives of the deceased. And, and sometimes you get into these good conversations and you talk about your faith and you talk about, you know, life in general with some of these people. And, uh, you know, I remember several times having a great conversation with, uh, with uh, some of the people who were still standing around and and then having to realize that, hey, they got to go and I got to go and we got to part our ways. And I would say to them, you know what? It's been great talking to you. <clears throat> Chances are I'll never see you again, but I know you're a believer. And uh, I can say honestly that one day we will see each other again. So goodbye and till such a time that I'll see you again in the land of the living, or the land of eternal life. Wow, I mean, those are powerful words. When you think about it, that's what Easter is all about. That's what uh, he is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujah, is all about. It's also about living, you know, with that resurrection power in, in your daily life. In fact, I got this email <clears throat> from um, one of the ladies uh, who was... Uh, scheduled to be on the women's walk number 161 to walk to Emmaus which I was going to be one of the spiritual directors for and it unfortunately got canceled because of the coronavirus pandemic and uh, she writes here about a song uh, that she heard called sales by Pat Barrett and it's about the the power of God's resurrection uh, presence blowing in your in your in your life setting uh, uh, the sails of your life of your heart uh, uh, and and blowing in your heart with so that uh, you can experience God's resurrection power in your life and she says as we continue to shelter in place I challenge you to allow the love of Jesus to fill you up with his complete sufficiency we marvel at Christ's sacrifice for us lowly sinners and praise God for his resurrection. I heard this song, Sales, and it, it has really got me thinking, really thinking. This is nothing new since I am a lyrics person. It's easy to love God when everything is going well. Not so easy when we are being challenged with life circumstances. This separation from others has caused me to realize there is no need for a facade. Only God's honest truth. I have been taking this time to really open myself up to the Lord. And it's not easy, but I'm finding it quite helpful. God knows all we have done and he loves us anyway. His truth will always set us free. I listen to the section that says, I let out the sails of my heart. Here I am, here you are. And it makes me feel like when I finally surrender to God's immense love for me it's the point when my heart meets his it's our secret place where he does his best work the image i see when i contemplate i let out the sails of my heart is surrender absolute surrender this email is all about the resurrection she wouldn't be writing this if christ had not resurrected from the dead so continue, like I said in my sermon a couple of weeks ago, to use this opportunity, this uh, pandemic experience, to firm your, your faith and trust in God, to firm it up, to push that reset button, to reevaluate, reprioritize, retool, reflect and also use this as a time to be as kind and as courteous to others instead of getting all embittered and nasty and mean which is a, a tendency when we're faced with these type of situations 
allow the resurrection power of God to help you to be more kind and courteous towards others, whether in your family or if you are dealing with other people and your neighbors, your friends that you see from a six foot distance. <laughs> it's crazy, but uh, that's the world we live in right now. I just want to conclude, if you don't mind, with these uh, words that I think I wrote uh, last year called The Empty Tomb. And it says, without the empty tomb, Jesus would have been just another dead man on a cross. His body tossed into a mass grave for crucified criminals. Without the empty tomb, the words, it is finished, would have meant absolutely nothing with all the blood, sweat, and tears done in vain. Without the empty tomb, I would not be writing these words full of spiritual energy, a spiritual energy this world cannot give or take away. Without the empty tomb, there would be no everlasting hope to carry us through this life and beyond. Without the empty tomb, there would be no miraculous power that can change the very core of human nature. I thank God every day that the tomb was empty and for the words, he is risen, that changed not only my life and countless others, but the very course of human history, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Have a happy and blessed Easter. And God bless. the 
they saw that they were not alone, but Jesus Christ has risen, hallelujah.